Hello, everyone. Hello there. Hi. Yay, all right. At least some of I'm I'm taking minutes because Julie can't come. Uh, okay. Thank you. No problem. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, Alan. Hey, Austin. Hey, Jeff. Hi, John. Jeff I'm taking Jeff. I'm taking minutes because Julie can't come. Oh, thank you for uh, for doing that. Sure. Hello, Lynn. Hello. How are you, John? I'm well. How are you? Good. I I just need to deal with by a couple of dogs. I'm going to mute for a second. Fair enough. Jeffrey. I understand the problem. <laughs> Mine are on the other side of the door. Long time no see. Yeah. Hey, Judy. Okay, here we are. I let my dogs have special guest privileges as <clears throat> occasional visitors to this meeting. <laughs> For some reason, this meeting has a waiting room and I have to keep letting people in. Did, did you notice anything different when you tried to join the meeting? Yes, I did. Yep. Just that you had to let us in. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what did you find when you were waiting there in the lobby, like old National Geographic magazines to read while you waited or something? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got to use the right link. Oh, and some of those Golf Digest and Sailing magazines also. I'd be all over the sailing magazines. I could take or leave the golf ones. <laughs> Oh, wait, another, another person to let in. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. Where does the prompt show that tells you you need to let someone in? Uh, I bring up the participants list, and there are like two sections to the participants list. It says uh, waiting and whatever, I had whatever the other already here. I didn't do anything differently when I set the meeting up, so I'm 
it must be some option that I missed. All right, I, I think, well, first of all, yes, it's after seven and it's 7.04 and we have a quorum of the finance committee. So it's um, Vanderslice, Fulgham, Zohora, Brown, Beatty, Sheehan, Lewis, and uh, that's it. We are joined by the CPC. Uh, the chairwoman is Lynn Spencer and I know Austin is on your committee. I assume Ellen is on the committee as well. Yes, yes. And I don't know, uh, Nancy is as well? Yes, Nancy Catalmo is as well, yes. Thank you for coming all of you. So, um, I guess finance committee is in a session. April 1st at 7.05-ish. Okay. All right, first order of business. The floor is yours, Lynn. Well, actually, thank you for inviting us to this meeting on April 1st. Is there a coincidence here I should be aware of? Uh, I, I was really trying to think of some other way to start this meeting and decided it was probably inappropriate to do so. Okay. Well, we are very happy to be here. And yes, I'm happy to be joined by Ellen Goldberg from the committee, Austin Antrim and Nancy Catalmo. Um, let me see, I think that Paul Spurn <laughs> might be coming in at some point. Excuse me. The little vignette with Dana was priceless. <laughs> Sorry, I missed it. Oh, it was really nice. It was really cool. It's all right. So um, earlier, Bob, I sent out a copy of the draft of our warrant articles. Is that something that you want to put on the screen and we can review that together? Um, I will, uh, may, may, may John, um, Comcast is being a pain in the neck right now. It wants me to reset my password so I can't get to it quickly. Can you get to it quickly? Can I? No, no, I, that was directed to John Fulgham. Sorry. What, what I saw in the email, I went and looked at it. It was forwarded on to me, and it had um, what looked like last year, fiscal year's uh, roster of um, articles, and then there was another spreadsheet that yes. was kind of just a... Uh, it doesn't, I, I'm not sure, I'll show you what I have and you tell no, me. If I, you actually, really I was, I actually, we actually drafted the articles. Right. So. It's not a spreadsheet. It's a Word document. It's a Word document, yeah. Right. It has everything. It's very complete with, it, you, you just send it to us. Right. I sent out, the first I sent the wrong one, the one that I was drafting, and then I sent the one that combined the two correctly. So it's missing okay, one me... article. Barbara, has, Barbara, can you put it up? Yeah, do you have it, the electronic version of that, Barbara? You're on mute. <laughs> I have it on mine um, if the finance committee would let another member share. I always like Ellen to do this. She's very skillful at it. Thank you. Um, I, is, is sharing is sharing enabled outside of the host? I could try if that were acceptable. Uh, Bob is the host. Bob, can you? Let me try to share and see if it works. Right. Oh, I didn't think so. oh, looks okay, like we got it. Yeah, I, I think well, everybody should be able to share, but then I was surprised by the waiting room thing too. Okay. okay. Yeah, we got it. We got it. And, and I see that there's a, that I, you know, in this true April Fool's fashion, I use last year's date instead of this year's, but this is, the theory was to, because our fiscal year um, 21 articles were not heard at the town meeting last autumn, is to combine the 21 and the 22 articles. Um, and that's what this document conveys. So we can go through it article by article. Does that suit everyone? Ellen, can you just scroll down a little bit? 
Well, so, if it's the same as last year, what were there um, or last time? Weren't there articles that we'd already agreed to? Wasn't there just, do we need to go through all of them? I think it's working. I mean, is it fine if we want to? I just wondered about that. So Judy, there's, there's the first batch is the fiscal year 22 recommendations. And then it can scroll on to, to the 21. I think there were some articles that you may not have agreed to. I'm simply putting forth um, our committee's recommendations. Okay. What, so the, how about this, Judy? If, if we get to ones where, we, where we're confident we've uh, discussed it and we agree on it, then we'll kind of give you the pass, Lynn, and you can just speed through it. Sure. Okay. So the first ones will be for new articles, the articles that are new to you. Um, oops. Sorry, I just want to save this um, to my desktop real quick, um, just in case we need to make changes in, on the fly. Okay. And I'm going to track changes, Lynn, so that we can see all what's changed. Okay. Um, perhaps while you're doing that, let me also give the, the committee a, a sort of a framing document um, because you'll naturally be wondering what are the resources that we're using for the, these recommendations. So we were provided, um, because we had not expended the fiscal year 21 funds, those are, are sitting in the account. We did receive a um, 69.5 four percent match from the state so for fiscal year 21 revenues we have two hundred and twenty thousand two hundred and twenty nine thirty eight in the state in the tax surcharge with a state match of one hundred and seventy five thousand two hundred and forty three dollars with a little bit of interest um, and then uh, an adjustment for the housing the ten percent housing credit um, reserve credit, we have a net available of $361,531 from fiscal year 22, 21. We then have estimated fiscal year 22 numbers um, that are quite similar. We're using, for the purposes of our planning, a 50% match assumption from the state, a little bit less than what we saw last year and what we've received historically. So we have um, in that pool, we have $325,000 between the surcharge and the state match. So when we combine the, these numbers, we have a range depending on if we use the 50% range, we have $976,000 to work with in that accumulated pool. We also have a general reserve of, of around $71,000. So just to give you a framing piece. So right. the, and I've, the, I've saved this file, Lynn, so you can tell me where to go in it anytime. And Bob, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Paul Spurn from our committee is actually in the waiting room. He just texted me, if you would let him in. I will. <clears throat> Thank you. Lynn, I'm taking minutes. So what was that final number of the reserve, please? Uh, $71,000. Yeah, thanks. Um, all right, so the first the first article is for uh, the $10,000 uh, administrative fund um, that funds our dues and it has actually contributed to the printing of the town warrant in the past. Um, the next article is coming up as one that um, well, I'll let Austin talk about this one because he drafted the supporting statement, but this is from the uh, uh, Nahant Little League. Um, and Austin, do you wanna just tell a little bit of this story? Yes, um, we received an application from the Nahant Little League organization. Um, they were requesting funds uh, to replace the backstop on what they call the Majors League field. Um, and then also a fence on the minor league field, which is adjacent to it. Um, this is sort of behind the DPW and fire station off of Flash Road. Um, some members of the committee, committee did go and look at the condition of the current fencing and um, basically it's 
in total disrepair. Um, the backstop looks like it may collapse. Um, so um, this funding will replace the backstop, the fencing on the minor league field, and then um, complete some other minor fencing repairs. Um, and the full committee supports this. Um, it'll enhance the recreational use of the two fields. Um, one thing that I think I would suggest we add to the supporting statement, Austin, is that they are also providing $15,000 in match. That's right, yeah. I, was, that's a I nice couldn't remember if this one did have a match or not, but yes, that's right. Austin, just a quick question on the fencing for the uh, minor league or the yes. minor field. Is it just replacing the existing fence or is it gonna be put in an outfield fence on that field, do you know? I'm not sure of the exact details, but I, I think it does not add an outfield fence, but I'm not positive. I can, we can reach out to the applicant, confirm. Um, one thing I do remember is that it will fix that bot batting cage area. John, do you know the, yep. the one that had the, the tree fall down on it? Yep, next to the soccer shed. Yeah, next to the soccer shed, yep. Yeah. It, it fixes that sort of okay. arrangement. And this still leaves us with enough space to hold a town meeting, should we have to? <laughs> that yes, was it won't, won't alter the space that much. Okay, good. I, it sounded like an odd question, but it's not actually. Yeah. All right. Oh, thank you. Great, Alan. Nice editing on the fly. Thank you. Um, next one, uh, let's see, is... Just roll down a little bit, please. Um, Austin, do you want to do this one, one again? You drafted this statement. Sure. Um, so there was an application from the um, Han American Legion post 215. Um, they were seeking some funds for some um, painting and floor work, but that work had already been completed. So um, after legal counsel's review, we can't um, reimburse work that had been completed, but after speaking with Dana and other members of the Legion, um, they are also, as part of that application, seeking um, an exterior sign that will go on the property of the life-saving station where the Legion post is located. Um, uh, Dana reminded the committee, or for those of us who may not have been aware, when they sold their property on Spring Road, um, they used the proceeds from that as a match for um, CPC funds to contribute to the preservation and restoration of the life-saving station. Um, so um, the sign will be um, placed on the outside to sort of recognize the Legion and that as their official meeting space, um, but they also agreed to place some language in there that um, basically it's being funded um, by CPC funds. Um, just a little blurb at the bottom to recognize the collaboration between the two. Okay, all right. Uh, the next one, you're on a roll. With... Go ahead, Austin. Sure, um, this was an application from the town of Nahat. Um, I believe, what was the date? Yeah, so, two years ago in the 2019 annual town meeting, um, $160,000 was approved uh, for repair or replacement of the basketball and tennis courts at the Flash Road Recreation Area. Um, when that whole project went out to bid, um, the bids were far higher than they had anticipated. So um, this is an application that will combine with the former, um, uh, the prior amount that was al already approved. So the total project will be 280,000. Um, the contractors who bid on it have held their pricing. So um, this work, if this amount is approved, will be able to proceed right away, I believe. Um, and that'll be complete resurfacing of the basketball and the tennis courts, um, new fencing, um, I'm not sure what else it includes. Tony would have those details, but um, that space will be usable again. Right now, it's really not usable at all. Yeah. 
Okay, so this, all right, so two questions. This is the space down by the uh, recycling area. No, this is um, on Flash Road, um, sort of adjacent to the fire station. There's a oh. playground there and- um, Okay, and how, existing... how is this one different from the earlier one? Uh, which earlier one, the 2019 or, or uh, last year's? Are there, well, there was an earlier one where we were talking about fencing and so forth. So- Entirely uh, different space. Yeah, it's a different, it's that you're talking about the Lowlands basketball court, perhaps, Bob? Okay, so the Lowlands basketball court is the one by the uh, recycling area. Correct. There, there is yeah. an FY21 application for that space. Okay. That's right. Okay. That, that was just discussed at the selectmen's meeting as well, and they spoke oh. favorably of it. Okay. Any other questions on this one? Austin, this is Dana. I, I just um, want to get a feel for this again. So there was 160,000 appropriated in, in 2019 for this space, and that wasn't enough to do it. So right. they need another 120 on top of that. That's um, correct, Dana. Yes. How, how does the community preservation? How, how do you guys feel about the the total amount there? Um, I'm. I didn't personally look at the bids they received, but um, um, I think in 2019, the procurement, the town did go through the procurement process for the work and um, the prices were a lot higher than they had expected. And that's what uh, the town administrator had relayed to us. Um, from, you know, I sort of live around the corner and work there and I've, you know, those, there hasn't been any work on those courts since I was a teenager, I believe. Um, the, the tennis courts are completely unusable. The basketball courts are semi-usable, but they're not in great shape. There's a lot of cracking and uh, infiltration of weeds and all kinds of things. The fences are falling down. So, I mean, personally, I think this is fantastic if they can get this work completed. And the, that amount of money for the amount of work that's going to happen, I don't think is unreasonable. It's basically a rebuild. They're totally awful. Yeah, they're on I was actually down there playing basketball with my daughter uh, last week. Um, so you can play a little bit of basketball. And, yeah, uh, it is in pretty bad shape. I got to admit, the lights are going to be fixed, and the fencing is all in in bad shape. I, I just was, I was just a little surprised by the total amount, and that's why that's why I'm kind of bringing it up. I, I agree that this is a you know this is beneficial to the town to have this space renovated. It just the, the price is just a little surprising. That's all. That's all I'll say about it. I, I just support the uh, the idea, though. I, I think one thing I would like to add here is that we did explore with Zach Taylor the option of relocating these courts out of the which which are immediately adjacent to the wetlands, and so part of the reason why the cost is the cost is because of the leveling and drainage that is needed to be installed to be in that close proximity <laughs> to the wetlands. Um, so there's, there's, there's some engineering um, involved here. Thank you, thank you for that. Okay. Sorry, right, just, just so, oops, so that point about relocating them, Zach in the town basically determined that it would be more cost effective to move them somewhere else and instead dealing with the issues related to the wetlands is even still a better choice. Well, yes, yes, John. I, I walked I walked that property with him at least twice because I was kind of determined to try to move it out of the wetlands area and you know these are two large courts so the the space that's available um was it was not easy one option was closer to the little league area that would involve some tree removal it sort of jammed things up quite tightly there it just there just isn't the space quite honestly okay. to, uh, to do this but it so, was looked at quite seriously lynn would you explain for, for the minutes the space here is not, this is the one on Flash Road near the fire station. That's what the decision was. Yeah, it, it's replacing the, the courts that are there now, Barbara. Got it. 
And yeah. the, the, the lowlands that you're talking about, that's not... That's a different article. That, okay. That's, that's, that's going to be next to just a few, a few articles on. You'll, you'll well, see I, that I just, again. I had to make sure I had the correct courts. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> yeah. hey, since this is a, my first time around on this, what's the process when, when I assume you folks do all the bidding or they, they run through you? No, the, the bids are put together. The procurement is handled by the town, Jeff. Um, so Tony, I think, is officially the procurement officer. Uh, Dane, uh, Zach Taylor was very closely involved with this, and I think he was very active, along with a consulting engineer called Vicki Mas... Oh, what's her last name? Vicki Masson um, put together the bid documents. It goes out to Chapter 149, Public Procurement. Um, so it gets advertised in the central register and bids come in. Um, and the result is that the, the low bid was $280,000 by a firm that has experience in this area. And they were willing to hold their price. So that's the, the delta is what we're talking about. The initial bid price or the initial estimate of $165,000 was prepared by the town. I don't think they had the benefit of, of professional advice on that. So it was, it was low. Okay, thank you. Any other questions about that? Yes. Okay. The next one is, is a fairly complicated. Maybe you could roll it up a little bit further, Ellen, so we can see the whole article. Uh, the FinCom may remember that they encouraged community preservation to and the town to look at it comprehensively at the needs of the historic buildings um, under the town's ownership, the public library, the town hall, and the Ellingwood <coughs> Chapel and Green Lawn Cemetery. Um, it, it, an envelope assessment was undertake was funded with CPC funds uh, approved by the town meeting. It took place in 2018, and you know we saw some very substantial estimates of needs. So, this article was uh, proposed by the town by town administ uh, administrator Tony Barletta to actually deal with critical needs for three, the three buildings. Um, the public library, which um, members of the, this committee will remember had a major project funded with 2019 money on the, as the restoration of the terrace. And that took place last year. Unfortunately, that project was, um, higher than expected. And it actually took the entirety of the $400,000 bond that was approved in fiscal year 19, plus an emergency fund grant from the Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund, plus some of the accumulated funds that had not been expended from CPC funding for the library. So while the terrace is beautifully restored, there are other building envelope needs on that building that require attention, pretty much to the tune of $300,000 worth of work. In addition, there is some work on town hall that is in the kind of in the next three years of uh, need category, and that's approximately $100,000 worth of work. And then lastly, for the Ellingwood Chapel and Green Lawn Cemetery. Ellingwood Chapel did succeed in, in making progress on its deferred maintenance needs. There was a Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund that matched a fiscal year 2019 grant that dealt with the North Tower of, of the chapel and really effectively arrested the water penetration issues that had been plaguing that building. In addition, that 2018 study looked at the stone, entry stone archway as well as the stone walls. 
And there we do hit some real money. The um, estimated need for that work is $750,000. The most critical portion of it relates to the entry archway where people um, drive through or walk through to enter the cemetery. And there's approximately $100,000 that was, it is estimated to undertake the work there. This article actually totals these three things into a $500,000 bond, 10-year uh, bond recommendation um, with the money divided up in the, the way I just described, $300,000 for the library, $100,000 for town hall, and then $100,000 for the entry arch. Sharon Hawks has applied for a Massachusetts Preservation Project Fund to help with the library project, um, but we can't count on that. And if it comes in, it'd be about $60,000 and that would be great because the, the work is, the, there is need there. So that's the nature of this article. It would say, you know, beginning based on a 3% interest rate, you know, year one of this bond, when it is taken, would start out at $61,250. So that's kind of a, there's a long supporting statement here, but that's the nature of this article. So do we have any questions about this? And then the, the implication there is that there, there is a long-term plan. That is the implication. Right. Actually, it's following the recommendations of that, that assessment. And you know, the fact is folks, that especially these, these, these buildings, and I write about this here, but these buildings have passed their century mark. And as masonry buildings, you know, when, when you get to that century mark, you are usually, you oftentimes face substantial masonry restoration issues. Um, and that is indeed the case here. Um, with the library, quite honestly, it's a jewel of a building and it has just not had the kind of funding that was needed to, to maintain it. Um, everyone goes inside and enjoys the beauty inside, but they, are, have not been so aware of the needs outside the building. And I have to say the terrace project was, was a, a, you know, not a surprise, but it was a surprisingly expensive project to address. That terrace basically formed that sort of clay tile roof, a clay tile surface formed a roof over the structural um, steel below and years of corrosion had really actually undermined the structural integrity of the steelwork. So that was a complicated project to address. Just to understand that, you know, that we're dealing with three buildings that are gonna kind of disperse the $500,000. Is each of those um, buckets kind of capped? Like, will the town hall definitely get its 300? I mean, it, or, or will the library get its 300, the town get its town hall get its 100, or if one project was more expensive or less expensive, would there be kind of a differential deployment of those funds? I, I think that's a possibility, John. Yeah. Um, one thing I should also add here, we think that there's a great deal of value in aggregating this work. There's a lot of similarity amongst the three projects. So a, mas a, a good masonry restoration contractor will be involved here along with a general contractor. So I think that there will be some complication in structuring the bid in the bid documents. And yes, there may be some fungibility amongst them depending mm -hmm. on how the bids break down. Who, who will be managing the, the collective project? Well, I think, um, Bob, in the past, mm. with the library project, um, the architect was Richard Smith, and he also was involved with the, uh, the uh, master plan um, that was undertaken by the library. So it's possible that he'll be engaged to continue this. Um, technically, this would require going to designer selection 
because of the, the, the fee um, structure. So I suspect that, that uh, Tony and his team will put it out to designer selection through the public procurement process. Um, I mean more on, on the town side, since it, oh, there so, are different entities, town entities involved. Yeah, sorry, I, I went the wrong way. I no. would think that the library trustees yes. will have a strong role here um, as well as, as town administration. And being a rookie on this, there's a, a there's debt on that you're incurring on this. Mm -hmm. Who's who, who's debt? Who's paying the debt service? CPC funds. Yeah, CPC oh. funds would fund the debt service. So does this this must have some sort of a, a long term impact on your your cash flow? Yes, it does, um, Jeff, because we have. We, you'll see further on the next article is to, to pay the interest on the existing library bond. So right now we have an obligation. We have a $400,000 bond that was taken in 2019. Um, now I have to ch connect more closely with Allison on just when, where we are in the stages of the bond. I, I have literally took the document that I had from two years ago for the next article, which pays the third year of the library bond. The first year of this library bond would only sort of kick in when the bond is actually taken. And that depends on how quickly the pro, you know, how quickly the town moves on borrowing the money. Um, not to address the elephant in the room, this is sort of a surprise. Will this impact the need for funds if eminent domain is approved? Because isn't there some bonding or funding involved in that through the CPC? There is, Jeff. So we can we can jump to that if you want to now. But I no, a general question. Yes, it, it will. I guess I'm just asking. I'd love to see a long term plan of of knowing what we know. What is what does this what does this debt cause to us? Is it sure? Manageable? I do actually have a table that we can put up and analyze that as we get uh, you know closer to the um, eminent domain bond or we could do it now if you wanted to no i don't want to disrupt the, the flow of going through this okay well let's let's sort of proceed along and then we'll sort of refer to that table one, one more thing lynn this is dana mm -hmm. will they will this bond take care of all the deferred um maintenance and restoration renovation uh, it won't. It three. won't take care of it all, Dana. It takes care of a very big chunk. So when you have a chance to look at at this this article more closely, you'll see, for instance, with the Green Lawn Cemetery, you know that wall that could be seven hundred fifty thousand dollars ultimately. Wow. So I know it's a wow. It really is the cost of, you know, the cost of the labor when they built it was probably, you know, $5 a day. And the stone came from the quarry across the street. So that was virtually free. Wow. But, you know, now labor costs are very different. Now, the difference is, unlike the arch, if we've got problems with the wall and a brick and a stone falls on the ground, it's not a life safety. It's not a, you know, it's not a critical issue. Yeah. But the archway is. So uh, this doesn't address all of the deferred maintenance for these buildings, but it takes a big chunk. And for the library, the most substantial chunk. Lynn, just one follow up to that too. Is the regular part of the town budget, does how much of that goes into maintaining these buildings? Oh, wiser heads than I would answer that question, Dana. I, okay. I, I don't know. All right, thank you. Okay, so the next article is the, the third year of the library bond. And like I said, I have to just double check with Allison where we are on this because I have the feeling that that library bond may not have been taken until last year. So there, there'd be a slightly different impact here, but we want to keep track of the obligation.
now we get into with that we get into fiscal could, year could 20, I read 21. the other one yeah i'm sorry the one about debt service yes I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know that I didn't quite. It's a four hundred thousand dollar bond, and you're just doing the debt service, which is fifty eight thousand. No, it, that's principal and interest. Principal and interest. Okay, thank you. Yep. Just to need to understand. Sure. So, I just before we go on to um, other articles for fiscal year twenty one, which will be a recap for most of you. Um, I will say that we had received in total, um, we had received eight grant applications. Of those grant applications, um, one of them was, was withdrawn by the town administrator and uh, two others were, were, well, one was withdrawn by the applicant a second uh, um, uh, application. And the third um, is from the Nahant Planning Board. And it's a challenging and complicated um, grant application and one that we asked that the Planning Board coordinate closely with the Conservation Commission, with the Open Space and Recreation Commission, with the neighbors and with the town administration. And this is for basically um, a study of the lowlands bear pond drainage area. So that one we did not act on because it requires greater coordination than we were able to see at the time of our review. Just so you're aware of that. All right, well with that we can look at the fiscal year 21 applications and the first one is for the Ellingwood Chapel to refurbish the interior, as I said, after the water uh, mitigation work has taken place. And that's a $50,000 article. And we hope that once again, that the Ellingwood Chapel will be available for community use with the, when the, pan when the pandemic comes to an end. Uh, the next one is the uh, seventeen thousand dollar grant to. Me, and this is Dana. Sorry to sorry to sorry. interrupt. Can I just ask a, a question about the Ellingswood Chapel? Sure. So the fifty thousand um, will that take care of all the preservation work on the Ellingwood Chapel? It. This is for the interior and it takes care of the most of the preservation work the, because we had that prior exterior project. So you don't expect something to come down next year? I don't expect anything big, no. Okay. Windows have been taken care of, doors have been taken care of. There's been a fair amount of work there. Thank you. Uh, the next one is, uh, $17,000 for the Story Club dock, the gangway and davit apparatus. The best person to talk about this is, is Austin because I this is beyond my pay grade. So Austin, do you just want to do relate us to what's happened over there so far and what else has to be done? So again, this is uh, an application from last year and after some discussion um, uh, with the applicant, which is the Nahant Dory Club, um, discussion with the town of Nahant and with the Nahant Harbor Master. Um, essentially the Dory Club wanted to, they needed to replace their floats and the gangway down to their floats. And they had the idea of installing a davit on the wharf itself so that the gangway can be lifted up and moved out of the way because what happens is a um, storm surge comes in sort of around the rocks there, causes the floats to be thrust forward into the gangway. And it, you know, whenever it's there in a storm and they don't have time to remove the equipment, um, it causes a significant amount of damage and can also damage the, um, 
wharf itself as the floats slam against the wharf. So um, since this did not get, there was a huge match on their part for this. And they, even though they are sort of a private organization, um, their floats <clears throat> um, are used heavily by the um, hot sailing program um, th throughout the summer. So there, it is tied to a public recreational use. Um, the amount they were looking for, the 17,000 here, that was a small portion of the total cost of the project, which was about, uh, I don't remember exactly, 80,000 or something. Maybe it's in the article, 83,000. 83,000, yeah. 84,000 ish. Yes. Um, and uh, part of this was um, sort of a new mooring system for the floats to keep them off of the wharf. Um, so when this article didn't proceed, uh, the Dory Club has proceeded with some of that work. Uh, the floats have been replaced. The gangway has been replaced. Um, in our recommendation from last year, we um, had the caveat that there had to be an engineering study that would be checked by the town and it had to receive approval from the town uh, to install the Davit system. Um, so as we're going through these again, we reached out to the Dory Club because some of that work has been uh, completed. Um, we can't reimburse them for that portion of the project. Um, the response I got was that they do still need some funds for the Davit project. Um, I have not, um, the applicant representing the Dory Club uh, was away I actually just, while we're meeting here, received an email for, from him, but um, he's gonna provide some more detail on exactly what they're looking for. So this one may change a little bit. It may be a lesser amount, um, but they are still looking to, for some community preservation funds to contribute a small portion to the Davit part of the project if it's approved by the town of Nahant. Austin, that Davit was, is gonna pick up the gangway and the decks and the floating decks? No, just the gangway. Just the gangway. Just the gangway so that the floats don't, don't get pushed into the gangway by a surge, which the, the, what happens is that the, the floats get pushed into the gangway, then the gangway takes out the racks that the, that the uh, little, uh, uh, little, dinghy boats are uh, stored on yeah, and dinghy nice. boats get, the, the, the rack gets destroyed. Uh, we need a new rack and some of the boats have been destroyed, but that's, that's just personal stuff. Oh, it's just the gangway. My, my concern was I, I get on the wharf a lot and I see a lot of little boats on that, those floats. And I'm saying, how are you gonna haul the, <laughs> without those boats knocking over? But uh, so it's just the gangway. I understand that. I would expect then that the cost should be significantly less, right? Because we're only, we're, we are providing a portion of it. We're not providing all of it. That's correct, yes. All right, so then we just, before we can move forward with this, we need to know the amount of money, okay? All right, sort of moving along. Um, the next two are actually housing authority um, articles. The first one is $45,000 for the properties at 4153 and 7577 Spring Road, as well as Emerald Road in terms of um, replacing defective siding. And actually effectively the same thing happens for the property that is at Spring and Greystone Road, the large complex there, which is $155,000 um, for the siding work there. Both of these articles are funded from the reserve that had accumulated in the housing, the, afford, the community housing category. And um, we were very pleased that the housing authority is actually been quite proactive in terms of the care of its properties. And we'd like to see that continue. Are these Coast Guard housing? Yes. <laughs> this is oh. more, very, very former, former Coast Guard housing. It's been in the community housing or affordable housing category for a while. Oh, but is this gonna be, are these properties that are going to be 
involved in the uh, Coast Guard housing? Uh, no, this the, the, this properties? is not that. No, that's that. This is not those properties. These were built as military housing, but this is not the current project. It's oh, a different plot of land. Different side of the golf course. I got okay. I know where you're talking about. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Shall we move on? Uh, the next one is forty-one thousand dollars from the uh, open space side of the equation for uh, reclamation of um, the east slope of Bailey's Hill, Fort Ruckman. Uh, the concept here is to actually deal with grading, um, removal of invasives, uh, making this more of an accessible uh, area as, as part of the V. First, I think what Zach Taylor has envisioned and as, as the first part of, of actually dealing with the whole of Bailey's Hill, which is full of invasives and has been the area that we're talking about is just below one of the big turret, the big bunker turrets, and um, it had been used for basically dumping for a while. So, this is really cleaning this whole area up. Any questions about this one? Uh, next is further recreation efforts. Uh, this is for the lowland softball fields. Um, in fiscal year 2019, we f funded backstops and improvements at one of those, the first of these two fields, and this is the second one. Any questions? Nobody? Uh, next is um, an important one. This is for town hall, and this is appropriating $165,000 for handicapped access improvements. Um, it's dealing with a number of issues, but one of them is in fact the ramp, which was installed some years ago, um, which does not meet code. Um, and it's, it, it's in, in marginal condition but it, it will also guide modifications to door hardware and so on. So it actually comes closer to meeting accessibility requirements for town hall. One of the things that still will remain is that in order to um, move from the main floor of town hall to the lower level, you have to go outside and around the building to get to the lower level of town hall. And that I think is, remains a problem, but it's, that, is, that will have to be addressed in a future um, handicapped access project. So how is this different than the money you were talking about earlier for town hall? This is handicapped access work, Judy. It's, it's not dealing with, with building envelope issues. All right. Uh, next on the list, moving down, Ellen, thank you. Um, Article N is $24,000 for the um, Little Nahant playground improvements. That's the one down by the Coast Guard? Yes, that's right. And you know, this would be the last of the playgrounds to be, um, you know, brought up to snuff. Um, some years ago, there was a, a marvelous group called um, Come Play With Me, which raised money privately, which we, which community preservation <laughs> matched for improvements at the Flash Road playground, as well as the one by the uh, public library. But this one has always been kind of left out there and it's, it's subject to, to a pretty good exposure from the weather. So yeah. the, equ the equip- Yeah, then I guess this is outside the scope of um, this committee, but I, I wanna raise the fact that there is no crosswalk over there. And that's, I, I think that that's a serious concern for the residents, for the children, because people cross to Dog Beach over there. And there's no crosswalk anywhere between 
a little in the haunt until you get all the way down to the Coast Guard station. Yeah. I hear you, Judy. All right. Now we get to that basketball course <laughs> that gets people confused. So this is $12,000 to restore the basketball court on Spring Road. That's the one by the uh, recycling area. Cheap in comparison. Yes. Yeah. The discussion at the selectmen's meeting is that this includes uh, planting some trees that will provide some um, whatever hiddenness for the, the recycling area. So it won't be so visible from the road. Oh, I see. Thank you. Right. Then, then we get to another payment on the library $400,000 bond. And next we get to Q, which is the $1.5 million bond 30 years for the eminent domain um, acquisition up for conservation purposes at East Point. And that is tied to several things. One, uh, a, an actual vote by the town to acquire the property, and two, to receive, for the town to receive grant gifts or grants in the amount of at least $3 million as part of the estimated overall acquisition and legal fees of $4.5 million. So this is a, a part of a larger picture. And I think this was the, the subject of a lot of discussion uh, with FinCom last year. I think this is the time to talk about what this means for community preservation as we think about the potential of three different bonds. Um, one is the library bond, which is sort of for $400,000, which is rolling along. This, the next is the proposed $500,000 bond that we've just talked about this evening. And then of course, the impact of this bond as well, which is looked at as a 30 year bond. So I do have a chart that we could put up on the screen to, to look at the projections on this, but I see beforehand that Dana has a question. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Um, the question is, you know, all of us, a lot of us in town are pretty dialed into this, this process and we're trying to understand everything. It's complicated, of course. Um, so if the amount of the eminent domain exceeds the funds available, is the money gonna come from community preservation funds? I think we have a limit on this, Dana. So I, I can't answer that, but I would say that our limit will be $1.5 million if voted by the town. For the borrowing and then the payback is gonna be closer to 2 million uh, yeah. kind of interest, correct? The, the payback does go over 30 years. You're right about that. Well, the town can only do what is authorized by this article. Yeah, I guess the question Lynn is to, um, do you see another application coming in next year if the price is above the, what looks to be about four. I, I will say this, and Jeff was actually opening the door, Jeff Lewis was opening the door on this earlier. There will be, there's going to be limitations on community preservation's um, ability to take on more um, because of the obligations we will have already accepted. Understood, I mean, it could be, you know, debt service in community preservation, getting more and more the whole community preservation fund. Um, but I, I, I don't know, we're not there yet, of course, but yeah. um, just trying to understand what the future would be if the price comes above 4 million, but as determined by the courts, if the town goes ahead with this. I would think that there, there my guess is that the other sources would have to be sought. Is Allison online? 
Yes, I'm here. Yep. Hey, Allison, the, the debts, you know me in debt. And mm -hmm. I, I get, and we get those beautiful charts now of debt for the last 20 some odd years. Right. And I don't recall seeing any, any money for CPC on, that, on those balance sheet items. The $16 million worth of debt that I saw is without any of the debt that CPC is carrying. Is that correct? No, so the library debt is on those spreadsheets. So, um, and that's the only one that has been authorized so far. Authorized by, how does that by town happen? meeting. By town meeting. Mm -hmm. So. And, and Jeff, I'm, there, I'm, there have been previous borrowings by CPC, but I think they've all been paid off except for the library. That's so right, Bob. That's yep. the 400,000. Mm -hmm. And that's been that's been delayed, I think, until 2022. Stop paying that down. No, there's already been a payment. So it's actually we issued short term bans for it. So it's in that bans balance. Correct. So it is in that in, in that uh, 16 million dollars. Mm -hmm. So it, I'm, I'm trying to figure out there's there's new stuff in here. And um, with this debt exclusion, does anything that CPC does, does it splash over into the debt exclusion? In other words, if we've got to go out and take another million and a half dollars, does that all of a sudden come in in the debt exclusion so it doesn't hit our property taxes, but we pay for it anyway? No, it's not part of the debt, the water and sewer debt exclusion is what you're speaking of. So that's, so, so the only two debt exclusions we've got uh, the school and, and the water, water and, and the sewer. sewer. Correct. Okay, so, yep. so no, nothing from here can go into that debt mm -hmm. exclusion without it passing through town meeting. No, and it wouldn't because CPC is its own fund. So it's completely separate from the general fund. And I'm mm -hmm. not even sure that that the debt exclusion would be allowed for that. So. Well, before um, we, we have to go forward and, and vote on these articles, is is uh will cpc going through and putting together what the impact on debt would be going forward is, are there going to be changes or are the numbers that we've already seen are they as gold so it would impact it so the numbers that you all the schedules that you have jeff do not have the cpc borrowing articles on them only so, the library and, one and how much more is that add to the um to the to the liability piece at the end of the year so and i think Lynn's, a, lynn has a spreadsheet that she was gonna going to pull up i think she ran a few scenarios of that and and jeff the the cpc borrowings are paid for with cpc, CPC money. money not town money but well it's all town money but not general fund money I, that's what I was just, Allison. That's that was my concern is that, that it stays in CPC and, and mm -hmm. that's that's the issue. So they've got to they've got to do their own pro forma to figure out whether or not their cash in can handle all of this additional stuff. Correct. Okay, that's my question. Lynn. In yes. the articles preceding this article about the borrowing for eminent domain, were there two article? There were two articles. One was for five hundred thousand. That it was in the second year of its loan of the bond, yeah. and another one was in the five hundred thousand. In the no, that was four hundred thousand in the. It was in the third year. And then there's the new one of 500,000 that takes care, that relates to both the library, town hall and Ellingwood. So that's three bonds, 500, 400 and 400 and the debt service of that. The one would be the 500 would be one year and the other one would be three years and then two years. Am I sort of correct? Well, um, kind of. <laughs> there's, a, there's actually one $400,000 bond 
And Allison, what year, where are we exactly on the payment of that? You, it, I know you just- well, I just looked it, at that, Lynn, because I wasn't sure. Um, it yeah. was issued July, 2019. So we would be going into the third, 2022 would be 20, the third year. Yeah. So I was kind of more or less correct. We yes. we should be in the third year of it. And 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 so what's confusing about this is I, I was, and I should actually clean this up because I was showing the fiscal year 21 pull on it and the fiscal year 22 pull on it. So I probably should aggregate that into one article. Right, Allison? Yeah, I would agree. That would yeah. make sense. Mm -hmm. So, so, so we are now proposing looking at a second bond for the three buildings, which would be five hundred thousand mm. dollars, and then the third would be the one point five million dollar bond for the open space at East Point. But you had some other other bonds that you're do, doing debt service two other bonds i think no no just no I, I only have one existing bond right now bill it just showed it is two payments oh okay there was because yeah. one was the the debt service that i that i okay okay just yeah. one yeah right. and i'm and, and i'm i'll combine that into a single article so instead of you know it, it just happened to be fiscal year 21 and fiscal year 22 so i'll now make it just one article. Could you scroll back to the ones, the, those, the, the ones that I'm confused about, please? Sure, Ellen, can you maneuver us back there, please? Wait, wait. That's that one of them. That's one of them, yep. And there's another one uh, the page, that's... Page one or so, or page two. Mm. Keep going. I think that's the No, no. No, keep going back. It's that one. That one, yeah. There's two of them. Are you going to combine those two? Yep. Oh, I got it. Okay. So it's only this is sort of these are those two or one. I'm confused. I was confused by that, but you're okay. Thank you. I hope. I hope so too. Me too. I don't want to be confused. It's easy. <laughs> it's just that I'm dealing with two years worth of the stuff. Anyway, uh, where were we? So, so a question will be, what is the impact of these three borrowings on CPC moving forward? And um, Ellen, I don't know. I, I actually just sent this to you a, f a few minutes ago, Ellen Goldberg, but- Yeah, let me just pause my screen and grab that, hang on. Yeah, if you could put that on the screen, I think it would be helpful for the group. Okay, I'm just gonna pause and go into my email and grab it. Okay. I won't uh, torture you all with my screens of um, emails and such. Mm -hmm. All right, you've got one with a PDF and, a, and an Excel. Which one do you want, the Excel? Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. Um, the PDF is the um, CPA model one, two years of bands, and the other is the bond councils. It's it's the bond council. Projections. I bond think it's the projections. It's that that one. Uh, well, let's uh, let's check it out. Hang on. Okay. Oh, it's going to be tiny. <laughs> this oh. will be painful. We'll do my oh. best. Lynn, are you comfortable yeah. having all of this put in the minutes? Your various, you know, because this is not, I can't put all of this in the minutes by myself. So are you going to be comfortable having had all of these put into the minutes just as they are? My, my articles? Your articles and this chart. Uh, I, well, attaching them to the minutes because I can't I sure mean, sure let me let me after this meeting Barbara I'm going to consolidate the two articles that were just confusing to us on the article on the payment of the library bonds 
I'll consolidate that and do a, a couple of other little edits and then I'll get that to you. That would be very helpful, as you can imagine. This is I, I know. And you know what? Well, I've got you because I realized that I misspoke at the beginning of the meeting. Can I give you some information now? And I think it's important yes. for the committee. I was talking about the amount of money that we had available and I neglected to clarify that there was a general reserve of $322,499. And, and I will send, Barbara, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna send this to you so you can put this into your table. I think it's something that I've shared with the group that's on my email and you're on my community, community preservation committee email list, but this shows the source of the money. Thank you. So, um, what this table does, folks, is actually look at two things. Um, it looks at the $1.5 million bond and then the library debt that we now are talking about, the $400,000 bond. And it is projecting it over you know, the duration of each of these obligations. So what's interesting to look at, for instance, with the library debt is it starts in hitting in fiscal year 21. This table was given to me, um, might need to be updated, but it starts with a low amount of the bands and then it, you know, it gets to a plateau and then it sort of diminishes. And by fiscal year 31, that obligation is over. In contrast, the next table up, the debt of $1.5 million over 30 years is projected. Thank you, Ellen. Again, starts low. In fact, it could be lower than this, be, be, depending on how the, the short-term bans are handled. But this shows the impact over time. The upper table at the very top shows the estimated CERT, S CPA surtax and state share and interest over time. So you can look at that, if you could click down to the estimated revenue cal, cal yep. If you look at that projection over time and then you compare that with the obligations with these two scenarios, you can see for instance, it, uh, that, you know, let's just pick a year, fiscal year 25, if we're paying the $1.5 million at 123000 a year in interest and principal, and then the library debt, we would still have $193,000 available for, you know, CPA distribution. However, this chart does not include what we are now you know, proposing, which is adding another $500,000 bond. But we can just project here and say to ourselves, okay, in fiscal year 25, we would take that $193,000 and pull out another $60,000 for that library bond. So that would leave about $133,000 available for grant making. So Linda, that, Anna, can I ask a question about that? That would mean that, I mean, the rough numbers that we've talked about here, that more than half of the CPC revenue would be going towards past projects debt service. Is that correct? That's, that is, that's the implication. Uh, is the CPC committee, I mean, comfortable with that? The CPC committee has looked at this and this is our recommendation. Okay, thank you. We, we also need to recognize that there'll still be reserve funds available that would carry through all of this. This is only um, active uh, funds in and funds committed. So Thank there's you. a there's a there's a cushion should something very important arise uh, where we would need anywhere upwards of two hundred thousand dollars. The money is there to spend if needed. Thank you, Paul. Also, that... The um, the um, stone wall at the cemetery is that in that category? That's seven hundred and fifty thousand. Right. 
that 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 it, that will be a remaining project to be um, undertaken. I, I would like to do a masonry restoration course there myself, but <laughs> you could train um, the whole town how to do masonry. We could, you? we could do it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of this, at, at the end of this year, we we are. Paul's raised a very good point because even with this grant making and and the table that we were working with as a committee, and I'm looking at it again, we were going to end up with a reserve of over two hundred and forty thousand dollars. So we try to maintain those reserves so we do have some flexibility, and of course, you know, unless there's there's uh, an application from uh, the housing with that will continue to sort of build the reserve because 10% of our monies for each of those categories gets set aside. We've always been very active with historic preservation and open space and recreation, a little less so with housing. So that's why that had accumulated to over $200,000, which is what is funding some the, the two articles that are in the fiscal year 21 category. And, you know, as always, it's a balancing act um, between what you want to spend and what you want to hold in reserve. You know, stuff that you're holding in a, in a reserve account uh, isn't working for you. So let right. me just one more follow up if I could. Uh, sorry to keep asking these questions, but if there were another article like the eminent domain for another million and a half of borrowing and principal and interest, uh, looks to be in that year, fiscal year 25, 123,000. Um, that would essentially use up all CPC funds for, for a number of years. Am, am I thinking through that right? Or I think that the CPC would find it difficult to, to look at another um, $1.5 million article. I think we would have felt we had made our, our contribution. Okay, thank you. Have you have you heard any requests for an additional one point? No, I think that's it, certainly have not, Bob. I think that that you know the scenario that the board of selectmen have put together is the one that we think makes a lot of sense. You know, a very three million dollars coming from private giving is a very substantial match to the one point five million dollars that we're talking about here. This concept is new to me but I really like it. I love co-mingling funds. You know, you can get so much more from co-mingling funds. What's the backlog? I, I, I don't, I mean, I see this being very active. Last year, there was a lot of projects and now it looks like you've doubled up on them. Is there a backlog, pent up demand or is it just a steady flow that comes in? Well, I think I think that's a great question, Jeff. You know, I have I talked with Tony because you have seen that we have, will have done a lot of recreation work with these various the tennis courts, the basketball courts, this baseball fields. And I said to Tony, "What more could we do? An ice skating rink? I I don't know." Um, but you know, there's there's always something to be done, and and you know. We, we did a major project at the town wharf, you know, $800,000 bond down there. And we have continued to fund work um, along the sea walls and so on. I, I think, I feel like, I feel good about the amount of work that has been done on historic buildings. That's my particular area of expertise. And I, and I see that the town has actually been stepping up and this half million dollar bond shared amongst the three buildings will make a big difference. Yes, we will still have the work at the Green Lawn Cemetery wall, but you know, it's it's not as critical as what we're looking at with with these, this bond proposal. So, um, you know, and it also sh should be clearly said, the majority of community preservation monies have, while some of it has gone to private nonprofits in town, the vast majority has gone to town owned properties, whether they're the recreation fields, the historic buildings or the open space. It's really been a significant addition to quite honestly, the stewardship of, this, of, of these properties. Thank you.
So let me, let me have a question, and, and I, I appreciate that the, um, the work that's been done, and you know, of course it's public funds, so it's not, I, I have trouble using public funds for private, uh, private endeavors, but it's public funds. But I have another question. Last year we talked about uh, the right of ways in Little Nahant. Whatever happened with that? We didn't get an application, so we, 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 we get, well, actually, Excuse me, we didn't get a new application, but there is still existing monies for the rights of way at Little Nahat. Um, so we have, we have got some clawback articles in here to sort of clean up some old accounts, but there are still active funds in, in a number of areas and that's one of them. And that will be quite honestly up to town administration to sort of carry out the, uh, the effort. But the money's there. What is that active way, Judy? Lynn, is it still in the articles in the in the articles from last year, or did we is it is it still in this document that we were just reviewing? We didn't finish going through it. Well, no, did it, we, we finish. Well, actually, we didn't finish all the little last bits. Um, Ellen, that's still in the account. So, if we were to look mm -hmm. at the clawbacks. There. It was it was pulled out last um, last time because. It, as I remember it, we were told that the money was there. It didn't have to be in, as an article. And no, it, it's in your, it's in the account. It's, it, it's sitting there mm. waiting to be okay. spent. All right. So Got it. what you need to understand is that what needs to be done to get done. And when I talk about the right of ways in Little Nahant, there was 12 or so right of ways in Little Nahant that actually got you to the ocean. And over time, any right of ways, the signs have been pulled down. People have, um, made that part of their property. And so what I'm asking for is we have taxpayer money that's being used as private private ground. And meanwhile, the taxpayers don't have access to the ocean. I, I agree. And you know, we've done the legal, we have funded the legal research that has established this, Judy. It's a matter of the planning board, which had been the applicant, taking up the cause of actually enforcing the right of way, the rights of way. But the money is there for that purpose. I'm having to look, I, I, I can't tell you off the top of my head because nice Allison and Debbie Waters give me very complicated charts for this, but I know, I know that there's probably over $10,000 there as I remember, but I'll, I'll look it up and give you the specific information. All right, is that something then that you then ask the planning board? Is it something that Tony has to ask the planning board? What's the process to get it going? We talked about it for a lot of years now. We yeah. give the money. So, uh, you know, we don't administer it. So I think it would be up to the planning board and town administration. You, you, you're not in charge of executing the projects. You are a funding no. source for the project. We're the funding source. We track them. We pay attention. I spend a lot of time on the library <laughs> terrace project, but and others. But um, we are not. We don't actually carry out the work. All right. So then, uh, Allison, is that something that you can bring to Tony? That it's time to revisit. The money is there. Let's 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 get that done. Uh, so I'm sorry. I missed the beginning of this conversation. Which exact project is this? This is the project about the right of ways in Little Nahant okay. being subsumed by people's property. And Lynn, from what year was that project? Did we commit? Well, we've got we've got several of them. So okay. I've got, you know, we've got some from. Um, well, Alice, and I can go through this with you, but on your chart, for instance, if you look at twenty B. Yep. You see public That's ways study and. That's yep. one of them. Okay. And then we probably, we might have more. Okay, I can look through, but no, I, I understand. Yeah. That's, that's um, and yes, Judy, place. I can talk to Tony about that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lynn. Sure. No, I think it's a great thing, quite honestly. I, it's very dramatic what has happened, Judy. So it should be. Steps should be taken. Agreed. Gee, you're such pleasant bankers. 
<laughs> you know, we're we're blessed to have th this money, Jeff. Quite honestly, I mean, the state match in the beginning was a hundred percent. It's been you know, sort of getting down a little bit less, but um, yeah. If you just roll down here, Ellen, you're right. There were a series of of unexpected uh, unexpended funds that we sort of claw back and put into the account. My favorite being the forty one cents down here, which I can't even believe that that was tracked. But, but you know, Debbie Waters and now Allison do a great job of quite honestly tracking these expenditures. And you know, I've got these spreadsheets that are eye crossing, but um, very clear. <laughs> So any f any further questions? Could you go back and could I read the more of the eminent domain thing? I didn't get it. Sure. Supporting statement is what I miss. Oh, do you, can you read it or do you want me to read it too? I can read it. Okay. Actually, I um, emailed this document to Bob and Barbara and um, I think uh, um, well the, to the entire committee. So this is something that could be shared amongst the FinCom. Thank you. Bill, after the meeting, I can send you the copy. I've got it. Yeah, I, after the meeting, I'll find it exactly. You, you, you. If you don't have a copy, you'll get a copy shortly. I've checked my emails and I don't have it. No, that's what I'm trying to say. I can send you because Lynn sent it to me because I'm on the C. You know, I'm on the CTC list. I've been going to some meetings. Right after our meeting tonight, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to the rest of the FinCom. Okay. Barbara, Thank you. I'll send it to them right now. I have it in front of me. Oh, you have it too. That's right. Yeah. Because you're also doing this. Thanks. So three members of FinCom attend our meetings. Right. Um, and I just do a distribution of all of our stuff, including the, uh, the, the work chart that we use to summarize our grant applications. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Dana. Could I make a comment about the trend of the debt service? It seems that community preservation is expending more and more for debt service. Uh, and I hope they, that they don't do that because they do do a lot of good things for the ball fields. And well, they're not mutually exclusive for sure. No, they're not, and the Dory Club. And, and our floats and, but if it, do, if it all go, if all community preservation goes to debt service, that's uh, not a good thing. Well, I, I think that what we were saying is that there still would be money that could be expended and, um, and the debt service sort of climbs and then ceases. <laughs> so I, I do think that when you have deferred maintenance issues that have built up. You know, you can kick the can down the road, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's any less expensive. In fact, it's more expensive to sort of continually do small projects, mobilize, do them again, go to bid and so on. So that's why we, you know, Tony and I and the committee just looked at this and said, you know, this is a time to sort of grab a hold of the work on these three buildings or these three properties um, and take care of it now. And the, we see this with the library project. I mean, it's just been pieces here, pieces there. This is trying to, to deal with it comprehensively. I do appreciate that the eminent domain taking is a big gesture. It's an important gesture. It's one that actually protects, we think an incredibly important uh, ecological resource and quite honestly, historic resource. So this is the time to set a step up and uh, participate. 
Linda, in our Anna, opinion. Can I ask a question about that, um, please? The um, so I think you're carrying a reserve of roughly three hundred thousand, right? Yeah. Um, would would the CPC consider using some of that reserve to borrow less money for eminent domain? It doesn't quite. I mean, we have a three hundred thousand dollars reserve, but actually, when we actually put these articles all together, we are actually drawing down some of that reserve. So we, if if we fund this in the way that we've laid out, we'll end up with a reserve of two hundred and forty thousand dollars. It's, I think it's not significant enough to make a dent, a significant dent, on that one point five million. True, but you know, depending on the interest rate, it might make sense to uh, to use it. Right, interest rates are pretty low now. Very cheap money. What would you think the um, interest rate would be on that $1.5 million, 30 years? This, this calculation was based on 3%. 3%. So that that's roughly, um, I want to say, $800,000 in, in interest over the it's a length significant of interest debt. And yeah. I think that we have a table that we've given to you on that subject, but. All right, so, so the 800,000, it comes out of CPC funds over 30 years for interest alone. It's just, just a fact. It's a fact. That's the fact yeah. of borrowing. Right, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Thank you, Lynn. You're welcome, Bill. Yes, thank you. Lynn, this so, is extremely helpful. Thank you. Detailed, helpful. Well, listen, we appreciate the work that this committee does. I mean, you all are, you know, grabbing hold of a very big budget and making it work. So we're happy that community <laughs> preservation can, can contribute to uh, the care of town resources. We're all in this together, as they say. I think you're right. So with this, I will um, sort of tidy up the uh, articles and sew them together so that those two sort of library uh, payments together in one article. Um, do you have any preferences to whether I should start with fiscal year 21 and 22 or how? how John and Bob, how do you want to, how do you want me to present this? I just divvied it up. I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, I showed a group of fiscal year 21 articles and a group of fiscal year 22 articles, just to say they're coming from two different pots of money. And they were two different times of review. I think it makes sense to do it that way, but I hope you would agree with that. I was about to say, would it make sense to group them by um, purpose, right? So throw the Flash Road articles together and throw the, um, well, it is already one article, that big, the big article uh, that's the town hall and the library and the Ellingwood Chapel. I, I, I don't know, I, I don't feel strongly really. I would say if it's, if it's less work and simpler for you to leave them in the order that you have them, it's somewhat chronological where you have the FY21 and then lead into the FY22, that, that's fine with me. I actually shared them in the order that we reviewed them. Oh, okay. Uh, but I agree, less work is Whatever, the way to do it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I don't think there's a strong reason to order them in any particular way, but to make the point that you did that it comes from two fiscal years, that's, that's important. Um, and maybe we can add that in some kind of uh, lead in recommendation statement, but whatever is easiest for you to group them, I think is, is, is fine. Yeah, agree. All right. Allison, I, I know I'm a little slow in the uptake. 
I'm, I'm hung up on the mechanics. That 400,000 library debt shows up in that BN balance. Is that correct? Where will that 1.5 million show up also as a ban? Um, probably, we probably would ban it at first, yes. So even, even though the funds will be provided by CPC, mm -hmm. the actual debt shows up on that schedule that we're tracking. Yes, because if we want to show the town's entire debt, we should be including that even though it's yeah. technically being paid from a different funding source. So the, and since we haven't voted on that yet, that's why it, it's not reflected in FY22's numbers. Correct. Yeah, and I actually, um, tonight is the first night I've actually sat in on, the C, on a CPC presentation of all of these articles. So I wasn't even fully aware up until now of everything that was going forward. Just when I think I know something, I realized I don't. Same here. <laughs> yeah, same here. Okie doke. And Jeff, you, you brought up the last thing we didn't know. By mistake, I'm sure. <laughs> no, 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 it was the, the, uh, the uh, water and sewer is outside of the two and a half. Yeah, that, um, I, I, I make a big mistake. I, I tend to read, um, getting, getting, Getting intelligent, or it's <laughs> all right. So, finance committee, are would we be comfortable voting this tonight, or do you want to sleep on this one until our next meeting and then vote it then? I, I would. I prefer to sleep on it. That's fine. I'm sleeping on it now. <laughs> this is riveting. Okay. I can go by the way. Yeah, I, I, either way, I would be comfortable voting now. But if you want to wait, that's fine, Judy. So, Bob, one thing I will say is, um, I, I've had some feedback from the guy from Sterling Printing with respect to the printing of the warrant book and the timeline. Mm -hmm. And so I think where we're sitting now is we have, if we have two meetings next week, the sixth and the eighth, then we also have room for a meeting on the 13th and the 15th, the following week. And then the Monday after that 15th, so basically I think it's going to be two weeks from the coming Monday is when the book will need to be done. So the 19th of April. Correct. So we have essentially, not counting tonight, four more meetings if we have two a week to get through everything. So if we kind of, you know, put our nose to the grindstone next Tuesday and, you know, do our best to plow through everything that we can and then finish things off next Thursday, then that gives us the 13th and the 15th to kind of potentially review our supporting statements and uh, work through the opening letter. Does that make sense? Yep. Because we had originally said that maybe we needed to have everything done by the 9th. So we yep. actually have, I think, one more week. Right. Well, if we're running tight on time, we could do some. We can go through this tonight if you want. I'm sorry, I didn't hear get that, Judy. But if you if you if you think we're close to, I didn't quite. I was saying that we're too close to time. If you want to, we can go through this tonight. I'll you know buck up. No, I mean I'm. I'm kind of like you. I I don't mind pushing it to next week, but I'm just. I guess I'm making the point that next week, by the end of the week, in our two meetings we should, will hopefully have voted on everything. And anybody who has an article that's already been voted, you know, you don't have to spend your Easter weekend working on the statement, but definitely uh, early next week would be great. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Yes. So next week is crunch week. Yeah. 
if you don't mind me just I really like this CBC concept you know if there's any way we could get the, the feds to cough up some money for it too that would just absolutely make my day yeah of course it ah <laughs> uh, yes leverage is a wonderful thing isn't it isn't it well in a small way we do try to get other grant monies in there's three grant three oh, I was going to say state, state funds private state funds, funds yeah. it's just yeah that's uh what a great way to fund stuff well, I mean, and of course, the East Point is a classic example. There's a very significant private investment being made mm -hmm. in that effort. And similarly, with the, the public library, the Friends of the Public Library are contributing, you know, monies to, to the care of the library. So, you know, things happen. Well, okay. That's all I got to say. Okay. All right, so what it is like 8.30 or so now? 8.40. 8.40. Is it worth trying to push through a couple more um, of the less controversial things that are left? Sure, I can, I can, uh, I can throw some stuff up. Well, let's thank yes. and the CPC. Yeah, yeah thank you, you all. Again. If you don't um, want to sleep through the rest of this, then yeah, thank you very much. And no, Ellen, we'll, we'll applaud you in <laughs> sticking Ellen, to it. Thank Ellen for getting everything up on the screen for us. I know. You'll thank get you. I, you have better, Ellen has better computer skills than I ever will have. Ellen's then, the tops. <laughs> and she does. Thank and you, Lynn. Lynn. And then you'll get stuff to me in a bit. I can, you know, for the, that's no rush whenever. Yeah, I, I would love to be able to wrap this up. Um, tomorrow morning and then um, whatever I, works for you. And I do, I assume, I should never assume anything, but I had actually drafted this updated insert for last year's town meeting. Um, this is this sort of running dialogue of all the CPC grants that have been funded and tracked over the years. I was planning to do the same for this town warrant, unless you tell me don't want that at all. So it's up to you. Well, the, there is, you know, essentially an annual report of the CPC that gets it is. published. It's, it is. is it, it is. It's the annual report of the entire history of CPC funding in the Hunt and all the grant making. So I don't know that we need history from day one, do we? I don't know, you know, this was started years ago and I keep thinking I would love to stop this habit, but there is some value to I it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I love showing the history. It, it's, I think it's important to show to everybody as well because it really shows the depth and breadth of the amount of support that we've, you, this committee has been able to give the town in its various forms. So I think it's a, a fabulous history, Lynn. I wouldn't stop. Okay. I'm not stopping. Okay. You're going to get it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get it. We You're going to get it. <laughs> we, we need it yeah. by like April the 12th ish. Right. I had on my calendar April 9th. So you give me three mm -hmm. more days. Wow. But they're, that's a weekend. <laughs> yeah. You think that stops things? You know, sleep is overrated. Yeah, Probably. that's right. Well, thank you very much, folks. Have a Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank Good you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, CPC. Thank you very much, FinCom. Do you guys see the, the infamous tracking sheet in front of you now? I do. Yes. Okay. So before you dive into this, could I provide a few updates that Tony wanted me to convey? Absolutely. Um, so they were going, they're going before the board of selectmen tonight. One is, um, let's find the article. It's for the police department capital, the two-way radio communication. It's article 18. Um, the chief got a final quote that's higher than what we originally included in the article. So, um, Tony's presenting tonight to the board of selectmen to vote, um, 
for a total of 190,000. It was originally 170,000. And that, that's to be borrowed. So funds are borrowed, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one update. And then the other one is um, there was revised wording um, on the Coast Guard housing article. Um, and it, it's to the point that everyone was discussing at the last meeting about utilizing um, the funds from the sale of the property to pay down the debt. We actually were able to get it reviewed by bond council today. Um, and so that revised wording is going before the board of selectmen tonight. Um, Good. Once it does, I, I think Tony will send it along to you, but I think that you'll be satisfied with this revised funding. I think it was getting exactly to what you were talking about on Tuesday night's meeting. That's terrific. Thank you, Allison. We, um, and Dana was there. We had a long meeting last night, which is really why my back end is, you know, like under the table tonight. Um, <laughs> and, and there's a group, and I, I just told Dana that this, that, that group always ends at nine o'clock, but they didn't. Um, but anyways, we've had a long meeting about really what the warned article should say. What's the best way to um, just remind the town that the time is ticking on that um, on that loan and make it make it a little clearer. And now, as, as Allison said, a lot of what we talked about. So I'm hoping that you like the way it turns out. So, so the clarification as to if it was a board of selectmen article or warrant or or a committee. Yeah, it's there a committee. Article. Right. Thank you. Right, and they were, you know, they were a little surprised that the language wasn't in there about the loan payback provisions from the sale proceeds. So they, you know, they were very uh, in agreement with what kind of we're trying to get at. And um, so they updated the, the article on the fly and then submitted it to the Board of Selectmen, I guess. Uh, Allison, did you notice if there were any, um, were they okay with that, the Board of Selectmen? Well, I don't know because the board of selectmen, their meeting started at 6.30 and I haven't heard from, usually Tony will text me, I haven't heard anything. <laughs> I'm assuming that they were, particularly because we did get bond council review and the change in the language, bond council actually references a mass general law that says if you borrowed initially for the purchase of the property, you have to use the, the proceeds from the sale of that property to pay down the debt. So there is a, a mass general law. So that kind of matches up with what we're saying, but I Correct. still think it's important to be said in the article so the people in the town meeting know mm -hmm. what they're voting for. Yes, it's it'll be clear in the article. Well, it just gets, it eliminates one obstacle. You know, where's the money gonna go? Well, no, so it's in the article. So that's one objection taken care of. So if the Board of Selectmen comes through with, um, you know, approves all that language, I think uh, in our next meeting, I'm, I'm certainly, um, ready to support that that article for the Coast Guard housing. Yeah, I'm assuming Tony will follow up tomorrow. I don't see how the selectmen wouldn't support it. So I'm sure you'll see an email tomorrow or Monday, maybe. <laughs> and will Judy get her rights of way also? I'm just being humorous. Judy, you're on mute. Listen, Jeff, I'm, I'm testy about it because I've been at, at, at discussing it for the last four years. And I brought it to door. And when Tony came in, that was one of the first things I said to him was a problem. And he said, the town doesn't have any money to do anything about it. And then CPC has come up with the money. So there it's isn't any reason. Oh, you do. Oh, well, yeah. It, it, it's very frustrating because there was like 12 of them here. And there's only one left. Yeah, you're right, Judy. I I agree with you. You know, we got to get those opened up again. It's town property. It's town property. I'm paying taxes on someone else is using using the property. It it kind of ticks me off. Right. It happened in Big Nahan, unfortunately, many many years ago. And there there used to be a right of way um, around the entire circumference of uh, Big Nahan that the town has lost because it's never never really enforced. Right. They used to do a circumambulation every year yep. Yep. to preserve the right of way. It's actually still there. I mean, well, it's hard to walk on it. But people but haven't been doing the circumambulation anymore. And there are some places where 
yeah, it's hard to walk on. Exactly. But it, still, it still exists. I mean, it, well, it doesn't go away. Right, but. I know, but when someone puts up a concrete pad and, and then a fence so you can't go through, that's a problem. Exactly. Yeah, that's a problem, sure. Exactly. And there's lots of that in being the hunt. And, and yeah, well, I'm just more familiar. <laughs> Okay. So you're all done with your updates, Allison? Yep, it was just those two items. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the list of things that we still have to vote. So I guess we should probably dive into the uh, like Article 36 parking violations, those type of things. So I'll stop sharing that one. Would you like me to make a motion on that? We've we've talked about that before. That's where uh, the new fine schedule. Yeah, cool. I it. mean, if you if everybody's content to uh, to uh, engage a motion, that that'd be great. So we're talking. Does anybody need to to talk about that one? Which one is it? Article thirty six. No. Uh, did you make a motion? He How was about make to a motion. There, there is no motion. We need a motion. Second. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor, roll call vote. Lady I. Old Jim I. Brown I. Lois I. She and I. Vanderslice I. Zahora I. Wait, please tell me again who moved and seconded. I've got to get that for the minutes. Uh, Barbara, Barbara I, I moved. This is Judy. Okay, Judy. Brown moved. second. And Brown seconded. Yep, thank you. It's been complicated minutes tonight. It is complicated. So we're done with that vote? Mm -hmm. Yep. We've already voted uh, 37, so uh, 38, which Tony kind of talked us through. Um, on Tuesday. So article 38 is is for the non-compostable shopping bag elimination or reduction. And I had a comment on that that Tony was going to get back to me about how the reporting and enforcement right is going to be done. So you still want to wait on that? I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm very comfortable. I'd like, I'd like to understand that. You know, we don't really have that many stores giving out grocery bags. So I'm comfortable it, voting it. I just it was something, and it may not need to go into the article. I just thought it was something that. I mean, I think it, in my mind, I, he sent us also the actual bylaw itself in the Word document, or it's if it's not mailed to you, it I dumped it into the folder. And to me, it's pretty straightforward. It's, you know, it's basically tides, um, uh, captain's pizza, uh, any of the, any of the existing restaurant or catering facilities that would put something in a plastic bag now have to put it in a paper bag. And that's, that's pretty much all it is. Well, and, also the two little stores. Right. Correct. Any, 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 any bag that you would get in any entity in town can no longer be plastic and you know, it's well, that part wasn't the problem that I get the health. He said the health department. He said oh, the health, health office. Was that that yeah. was the issue. It was yeah. the health department. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm comfortable voting it. If what about the health department? The health officer who has a pre-existing relationship with all the restaurants and uh, facilities that kind of sell food and drink. Tony said that it would be his kind of under his mandate to kind of uh, communicate and, um, you know, explain this new bylaw to them and see that they, you know, I don't know if, how it actually was going to get communicated to him that people are violating it, but he would be the kind of enforcement officer. 
Okay, so for 38, does someone want to make a motion? I, um, if there is no motion, what are the specific questions or action items that we need before we are comfortable? I'm comfortable making a motion now if other people are comfortable in, with me making it, but. No, I, I'd like to know what the fine is, how much, how much time they have before it starts. Oh, that's all in it. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's all laid out. All right. Well, then I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the guts of it are dumped in the in the OneDrive folder, Judy. Yeah. But it does lay out exactly it, the fine. Yeah, it's not a it's not an open ended, ill defined kind of path. It's pretty pretty tight. All right. So, Judy, do you want time to review this? To review the the specifics of it? No. Mm -hmm. No, I'm good, guys. I, okay. I just missed it. That's all. Thank you. No worries. All right. So, Barbara, I, I don't. Did you actually make it? I wanted to find out whether people were comfortable with me moving it. But now that I hear that they are, I will move that we recommend the um, non compostable shopping bag reduction, Article 38. Okay. Second. That's, I'm asking for a second. I can't second it myself. I second it. Jeffrey? Yep. Told, told you my. ADI. Brown yeah. abstain. Lewis I. Vanderslaus I. Zora I. Dana, did you? She and I. So, okay. Can we add nip bottles to that too? <laughs> It'd be nice to be able to do that, huh? Yeah. I see, I see a lot of them on my walks. Yeah, more and more every day. <laughs> Especially now that all the snow is melted and they've fallen out of the snow banks. And what's worse, I think, is the masks, the number of masks I see on the ground. Yes. I thought nips went away after I left high school. I guess not. <laughs> no, they're very popular. Seaside Variety has a whole wall of them. <laughs> All right, so Article 39, the, uh, the new towns initiated lowlands drainage article. I'm trying to remember, did Tony say that there was, he said that there was, I guess I don't think we can really vote this because he said that at tonight's selectman meeting, there was gonna be some minor tweak that Christine Lissio wanted. Is that true? Do you guys remember that? I think so. All right, so we'll, we'll pass on 39 and then, uh, Article 40, uh, so I know, I, I don't wanna go down the spiral again of, so, you know, the, the point of, do we, do we make recommendations on citizens' petitions? Um, in this case, for Article 40, I would say, we would vote to not recommend this because we're gonna, we're gonna recommend Article 39. I don't think we can vote on this until we vote on 39. That may, I, I kind of agree with you, Bill, but just, just uh, I guess, have a quick conversation about my logic there. Do you think we would, we would uh, vote to not recommend 40 if and when we do recommend 39? Or would we just say we make no uh, but it is recommendation? Isn't or aren't the petitioners for 40 going to withdraw their their article here if 39 passes? I thought that was the intent. I would assume so, but do we want to make sure that our voice is, you know, uh, expressing that that sentiment, or do we just wait and see what happens? Uh, how, what, whatever our vote is. The words in the recommendation should note that. Okay. So maybe we'll wait for Tony. I, to I, I agree with your concept of, of waiting on 40 for 39. 
Okay, so we'll wait and see what Tony says. And if he says, oh, they're obviously going to pull it, then we'll decide whether we make no recommendation because it's already going to be pulled or we cover ourselves by making a not recommend statement. Okay, so how about Article 41? Well, John, you just um, make, you started out with a really interesting point. We started out this parade thinking that we did not recommend citizen positions. We don't make comment on them. Right. Uh, are, do we do that? I mean, you couldn't find anything that said we, we couldn't, it just had it. Right, we haven't lately and we haven't done it when it's when it's been quote unquote, a political issue. Like it seemed like there was times when things were, you know, maybe finance or more, you know, non apolitical things, we, we kind of leave up to the voters to kind of fight it out on their own. But if there seemed to be a significant financial tie to it, then it seemed to me like there was some precedent that we had at least, you know, made, made our voices uh, present in those conversations. So, so I guess, so with uh, the next one, you know, the, the wetlands bylaw, I mean, that's kind of, I think Bob, you're, you're assigned to it, but is that one where we'll, we'll make no recommendation? I, I think that's really up to the committee. This is the one that um, B. Rogers submitted so that there was there was closure to the committee that was formed at uh, it wasn't the last town meeting, I think it was the one before. And we will be uh, we will be including a report of that committee in our booklet. So Didn't we last year decide that we weren't going to make a recommendation on this, as I recall. Uh, I have in my chart that we made no recommendation. I, but, that's what I recall. But I, but I also thought I had a had a statement from Bob. So that I'm not sure how those two things can, can we can we write a statement when we make no recommendation? Is that kosher? I think we can do whatever we want. Okay. Yeah. I, I did actually read through the FinCom handbook right. for the past couple of days. And there's really not much guidance in there regarding recommendation, no recommendation, and all the rest of it. Okay. So, so maybe we can make this short and sweet then. So for, for uh, article 41 and 42. And so those two citizens petitions will make no recommendation, but I think Bob had some tactful language related to article 41 that we could insert. So we'll try to find that and get that in front of people. And I think for 42, a similar type of, uh, at least comment that, you know, the committee is obliged to take the citizens petitions as written. And in the case of Article 42, it's not really written in a way that's, that's compatible with making it a bylaw. So that this could be a place where we add language that talks about, you know, the need to kind of for citizens to kind of very deliberately and in an engaged way work with the finance committee to help sculpt and, uh, you know, not, not, I don't want to say sculpt, uh, maybe that's the wrong word. Just, yeah. just give, yeah. them, give them guidance uh, to make sure that it can go through the process in a way that results in the end that they, they intend. So does that make sense? So we, so I guess then that takes us through article 41, 42. And then the only last article 
we have to vote at least other than the ones we've already passed over is this one, Article 43. John, I, I, I have a question. I guess throw it out to, to the whole FinCom, but are any of these committees um, you know, pretty much uh, done or we don't need them anymore? Is that, or do, do we just continue them? I thought, I thought Tony, I think we've had this conversation and I think Tony pledged that he would go in and call the list and also previously, I think some of the names weren't quite right. So I think he fixed the names. So I think. No, I don't think he did because it says Coast Guard Housing Committee and that's oh, Okay, I hear you, yeah. He did mention to me today that he still had to do that. Okay, so. all right, so we'll wait on that. This article is surprisingly um, more complicated than you think. Can we go, did we need to vote that we were not going to recommend um, 41 and 42? Um, I don't think we voted to not recommend. Don't we have to take an official we, so, so you're saying not recommend or make no recommendation? Make no recommendation. And then make no recommendation. Do we have to fish officially vote to make I, no recommendation? I think we might as well just... Okay. Ourselves. Okay. That's I was going to. I was going to say no. Rec I was thinking no recommendation didn't need a, a vote. Oh. To not recommend, you need to vote that. But well, not I'm, only uh, not, re not recommend. I'm fine to, uh, but I may. You know, Bob. Bob was going to go back and kind of see if that were, was actually the case. Um, yeah, that's maybe, what I was looking maybe for. Maybe to co cover I, ourselves, we, we. I think that you do need to vote. That's what I thought. That's My what experience I is yes, I've seen finance, other finance committees vote, even if they're not making a recommendation. All right. I was okay. pretty sure we needed to. All right. So, does somebody want to make that motion for Article 41? So moved. Second. I second it. Full was July. Second was Lewis. Yeah, Lewis. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Okay. Beatty, I. Anders, I. Laura, I. Lewis, I. She invokes I. No recommendation. Right. That's what we're voting on. Oh, yeah. I got that. Brown votes I no recommendation. I think I just woke up. I did vote no recommendation, right? Yes. By saying I okay, good. Yes. <laughs> and number forty-two. We need a yes. motion. It won't work. We need uh, we need a motion on forty two, I believe. The same. No I'll make a motion to do no mo no recommendation. And a second on forty two. I'll second that. Brown mm -hmm. aye. Beatty aye. Lewis aye. Sheehan. Sheehan. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Bob. Go ahead. Sheehan aye. No recommendation. Aye. Okay, the eyes have it, and that it that's that's all we can get through tonight. Then I think so. There was one question. I don't know if we can do. I can do it without Julie's uh, minutes, but there was. I I have the four no recommendation votes that we made last time. But I, ha I have a feeling one of them, we did the same thing. We, or we didn't do what we did tonight. We didn't actually make a motion for no recommendation. So I, let me just cross check that with her minutes. And then if we need to make this type of uh, no recommendation vote again for any of those four, we'll do that next week. And um, John, I, I've got to write up something for 20, Article 26, and that was the no recommendation on snow removal. Yeah. So does that mean I, I don't write anything? I just. I think we need, I mean, that was the, that was one that kind of went back and forth. If I, I was trying to recount with the 
I think Dana, how that went. And I think it was, we voted first to, wait, it, it failed. Uh, I think we went, can I jump in? Yeah, go for it. At first we voted to recommend, that failed. And then there was a motion to not recommend and that tied at four to four. Right. And so then we landed at no recommendation because of that. On, yes. on, on the snow and ice article? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's what, exactly what happened. No, not the snow and ice article. It's the removal of the snow from the sidewalks, yes, correct? correct? Oh, yeah, the sidewalks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. I was wondering why. The new bylaw. Yeah, that, make, that makes a little more sense than voting against. Um, yeah, <laughs> makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, so so in that case, Jeff, I think that is that may be the one of the ones where we need to go back. And if if we we failed to recommend it, we failed to not recommend it. So now I guess we need to vote to make no recommendation. And then I would argue that in the statement, even though we're not making we're making no recommendation that we should still have a statement. I, I mean, it's kind of counterintuitive, right? If you, if you, if the vote is no recommendation, but then we have language that explains how we came to have no recommendation, right? That there was issues with respect to uh, people being unclear of the enforcement mechanism, people being unclear of uh, who actually owns sidewalks and the whole can of worms that that would potentially open up. I think were, were there other issues related to that that people wanted to put into the language? I'll, I'll take a stab at it, John, and I'll run it by you and, and yeah. Bob. And... Yeah. Try not to use any incendiary bombastic statements. <laughs> Dave, is it with melt ice? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Just a little, sorry. It's getting late. Yeah. And it's April Fool's Day. It is, but that was not it that being, it le it being late. <laughs> I was curious, uh, going back to the snow removal from the sidewalks, because the second vote failed. Does that mean we land on no recommendation? Or do we have to go and ahead and have vote? To vote for we that. have to vote to have no recommendation. Exactly. I think we still have to, it sounds like we sh should protect ourselves by making a vote to have no recommendation. Allison is nodding her head. And we should do that next time when we get Julie on, on board. Yeah, I would do that just to make sure. You can't yeah. be wrong to do that. Okay. So do you want to vote that tonight or not? We're not going to? We, we have a quorum, but we don't have Julie. Uh, I'll be here Tuesday. Yeah, I'll be here Tuesday too. Yeah. Me too. Still alive. All right, Tuesday it is. So, I'd like, to, I'd like to, to make a vote that we, we no longer accept 43 articles in the future <laughs> and the penalties of something. Yeah. We should put an article in that there can be no more, no more yeah. than number of articles. Hey, let's make that article 44. <laughs> 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 all right, are we all set, guys? Yeah. Well, uh, I don't think there's any administrative stuff left. Um, public forum. Uh, Austin and, and Kathy Martin are the only two public members of the public I see left. No, thank you. <laughs> okay. Then I would think a motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Brown, aye. Gender slice, aye. Lewis, aye. aye. She and I. Happy April Fool's Day, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Oh, do you want to hear one good April Fool's joke? Sure. Okay. So in 1698,
this is how April Fools originated. In six, as far as they know, the first official April Fools prank in 1698, some foolers in London told people that they should go to the Tower of London on April 1st because there was gonna be a washing of the lions, okay? <laughs> So a whole bunch of people went to the Tower of London and guess what? There was no washing of the lions. <laughs> and so the next day, the people who you know walk up and down the Strand and whatever their little newspapers and things, they made jokes and made fun of the people who went on April Fools to see the washing of the lions. <laughs> so is that an April Fools joke or is that- That's a real- yeah. That, that is the real origin of the first April Fool's joke that's known. That's what I'm doing, my little history piece. But did you, did you hear that today or did you hear that on a non-April 1st day? I looked up <laughs> history of April Fool's Day. Okay. We'll trust you. Thank you. Yes. Washing of the Lions. All right. Excellent. So we all learned something too. I'm, I'm Thank gonna you, pass, I'm going to pass that to my grandchild tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. We're doing a washing of the warrants. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll be doing a washing of the car. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Good night, Bye, everyone.